is up everybody welcome back to another video and in this video we are looking at our new defensive coordinator really learning about him and that is Corey Underlin so let's get it started Gunlin was hired this morning and unfortunately I had to make a video this morning super short just to get it out to you guys because I had to go to school and that kind of stunk. I had that short video. I didn't have much in it. I barely could edit it. And I just got it out there and I was like, wow, that's not how I wanted this video to go. And that's also not how I wanted it to go once we had the breaking news. And I really wasn't expecting the breaking news to happen early in the morning like that. I guess not early, but in the morning like that. I really wasn't expecting that, but it did. And now we're going to be really talking about Corey Unlin because I was able to take time. I didn't have to do anything at school and look at Corey Unlin and really learn about him. Okay. Now, now, one thing I'm going to go through is what a quality control coach means. So we talked about quality control back with the special teams and Brandon Coombs, when he was hired to the Detroit Lions recently, he was also a quality control coach at some teams. And so is this guy. So I wanted to read off what quality control means in the NFL. So a quality control coach is a member of a coaching staff of an NFL team. His primary job is preparing the team for a game beginning sometimes two or three weeks before the actual game. Defensive quality control will do similar analysis of the offense. So they kind of just prepare for a game. I guess that's what that means. And uh, they're, they're just kind of part of the staff. So there you go. That's what that means. Now, let's get in to Corey here. Now, Corey is a 48-year-old coach who has been through it, man. This guy's been coaching for over 20 years. He's coached at both the college and the professional level. And he met up with Matt Patricia back in 2004 with the New England Patriots for that one-year stint. And that's a very important year. He started off in college. He coached at Fresno State as an assistant. Then, like I said, first stay in the NFLs with the New England Patriots back in 2004 and that's important because that's where he met Matt Patricia and that's the only time they spent together as coaches. Then he was a quality control coach, there you go, in 2005 and 6 with the Cleveland Browns. In 2007 he was their special teams coach and in 2008 he was the defensive backs coach. Then he was a defensive assistant back in 2009 with the Jacksonville Jaguars and a defensive backs coach in 2010 and 11. Then he was a quality control coach once again in 2012 with the Denver Broncos and their defensive backs coach in 2013 and 14. And he ended up being the defensive backs coach for the Eagles. And after that, um, from 2015 to well, the past season, and now he's with the Detroit Lions. So he's been everywhere, okay? This man has been through it all. He has coached a lot of different uh, positions. He has been quality control multiple times. He has worked with defense, with defensive backs. He's been an assistant. So he's been through it. He is very familiar with the game, which is a very good thing, okay? And like I said, the only time they were with each other when Matt Patricia was with Corey is back in 2004 with that one year with the New England Patriots. They both had different positions than they do now, but that's the one time they were with each other. But Matt Patricia still remembers. He called him his friend, and he talked a little bit about him after the Eagles game. If you you guys can remember that when we beat the Eagles. He talked about the different mixes they put in the secondary against them. Okay, so that's that's the only time we really heard him talk about him. And now he is with the Detroit Lions. So I know a lot of people are kind of unhappy about this signing. Wow, it sounds like I have something in my throat. A lot of people are unhappy about this signing and they're saying, or hiring, I guess I should say, and they're saying, okay, look, this guy has not had a good secondary when he has been a defensive back coach. So what I decided to do is go from 2014 all the way into 2019. Actually, we're gonna exclude 2014 because he wasn't there. I don't know why. I put that in there okay 2000 you know what here's what we'll do we'll keep it 2014 okay no no you know what no we're not gonna do that i'm looking at this wrong get rid of 2014 we're gonna start from 2015 and look every year to 2019 and see how they finished in against the past okay the eagles versus our lions i just put our lions in there for i guess just to get a little feel of you know where we were now obviously in 2014 15 16 and 17 we were with jim caldwell it's a completely different staff and now we we're with matt patricia so let's look at some numbers starting back in 2015 when the lions were ranked 14th against the pass and the eagles were ranked 28th so why am i doing this well this is because this is when he was the eagles defensive backs coach so they ranked 28th in his first season then in 2016 lions were ranked 19th against the pass and the eagles ranked 13th so a big jump there which is really good to see and then in 2017 the lions were ranked 27th and the eagles were ranked 17th so two solid years around the middle of the pack however in 2018 it was really terrible we finished eighth which was a really good year for us against the pass however the eagles finished 30th yeah, that was that was a tough season. Now, injuries are definitely a factor, but I know every team has them, so I'm not going to just look at that because the defense is a little bit different. It's not like you have a quarterback defensively. Yes, you can lose big names, but I'm not going to, you know what I mean? We have enough here. We have enough here. And then in his final year uh, with the Eagles, the Lions were ranked last, which was this season for the Lions. They were ranked last against the pass, and the Eagles ranked 19th. So really, not really any good seasons, no top 10 finishes, but I know that is a 
a pretty simplified way to look at things. But you also have to look a little bit deeper, and there is one stat that looks pretty good under Corey, and that is that the Eagles, in the last five years with him, when he's been there all five years, three of those years, they were actually top 10 in interceptions, which, if you guys can remember back to my last video, I talked about the interception difference between us and the Chiefs defensively, and how we just don't get that many turnovers. So, if you guys want to check that video out, you can. That's the Detroit Lions identity. That one really ties in with this one pretty well. But bringing in a guy like this could potentially help. He was also a Super Bowl champion back with the Eagles, if you guys can remember, in 2017, I think. And then he also worked with Jim Schwartz, which I think is something to think about. He was with Jim Schwartz for a little bit because Schwartz is now the defensive uh, mind over there in Philadelphia. So that is what that looks like. Now, there's a lot of facts that go into it. Um, simply looking at stats can be a little... Uh, deceiving, I guess you could say, because, you know, when you look at our rosters, they're definitely different. We have different talent than they do. They play different division, right? They have the Redskins, they have the Giants, and they have, who is the other team in there? I can't think of the other team in there. The Redskins, the Giants, the Cowboys. They have the Cowboys. So those are the, the opponents they face. Um, not a lot of great passing teams, I guess I would say. Uh, Giants, questionable. Dallas likes to run the football a lot. Prescott, not bad. And the Redskins, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, and then in our division, we have a lot of teams that can't pass, like, like the Packers and the Vikings, uh, not necessarily the Bears. So, but when you look at our roster differences, like last season or this season, if you compare the Eagles defensive backs to ours, the Eagles defensive back uh, field looked like Jalen Mills, Russell Douglas, Craig James, Malcolm Jenkins, Rodney McLeod, Avante Maddox. Craven LeBlanc, Sidney Jones. So a little bit of talent there. Very talented Malcolm Jenkins, but not a lot. When you look at all our defensive backs, just a few of them, the name it would be Darius Slade, Justin Coleman, Amani, Mike Ford, Tracy Walker, Will Harris, Miles Killebrew, assuming some of those guys are still here. So yeah, I think that's, um, there's, there's a little bit different in skill gaps. Obviously there's a big difference in a lot of things here. He didn't finish great against the pass, which is something to be concerned. But again, I think the reason that this hire happened is very, very important that he was with Matt Patricia in 2004. If they never crossed path, I don't think that these two guys would be together. Now, one thing that I thought about is that I think it kind of makes sense that he would go after him. Even if this isn't the right guy, I think it makes sense that he would go after a defensive backs coach. He plays a lot of defense, as we know, where we don't blitz. He likes to just have our defensive backs make plays. So I could see why he would want to bring in a guy like that because he likes to drop back anyways, tons of guys. And I think that's another big reason to try to bolster this defensive line because now you have a defensive backs coach as your defensive coordinator. So your defensive backs should be good in theory. However, they haven't been great against the pass. They've been pretty mediocre, I guess you would say. But they have had some good seasons with interceptions. And I think that's very important that's overlooked. So I don't know how to feel about this one right now. I wouldn't say I'm surprised. I wasn't expecting like a big name that people were thinking about to come here but at the same time i don't know if we got the best player or the best coach but i think he does fit what matt patricia wants and what matt patricia wants in my eyes is a guy that's going to help out be a quality control type of guy but instead it's still matt patricia's defense so i think that's what we added here Will it work? Time will tell. We know it pretty much has to work for Matt Patricia. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this works out. I really want to see it succeed in 2020. So hopefully our defense can get this thing figured out and hopefully Corey here can help us out. So there you go. Can Corey be the right guy for Detroit Lions? I absolutely hope so. Let me hear your thoughts, comments below. Thank you for watching and I'm out.